Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Missing Body of Elizabeth I. Throughout history, there have been many iconic kings and queens whose lives have been celebrated. Arguably, the greatest monarch during the Tudor period was Elizabeth I, who faced a huge amount of criticism and enemies during her time on the throne. Elizabeth was questioned for her gender throughout, and many believed that she would not have been strong enough to stand up to the Spanish Armada. But each time she encountered problems, along with her advisers, she managed to solve them, but also defeat them. Elizabeth is remembered as the Tudor Queen that Henry VIII, her father, would have been proud of, and she did have a brutal side, including when she executed her cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots. Following her death in 1603, she was buried inside of Westminster Abbey. She was moved into an ornate and beautiful tomb. However, in the century after, the monarchy decided to commemorate Elizabeth I in a remarkable way, which offered her final acceptance as a brilliant monarch. However, part of the way they did this is missing, and today, the body of Elizabeth I, in effigy form, is lost. One of the world's oldest exhibitions which can be seen inside of the Tower of London, the place where Elizabeth I's mother lost her head, is the line of kings. This is remarkable and brilliant, and is a collection of armour which belonged to different monarchs throughout the centuries. The line of kings also features the horse armoury, and displays suits of armour placed upon wooden horses. On the 25th of March 1652, a Dutch visitor to the Tower of London noted the remarkable collection, and he said their guide took us first to the armouries where armour, most new and tested, for 10,000 men was stored. After this, we entered a room where horse armour, used in former times, was stored on wooden horses with armed men on them. There were two suits of armour, worn by Henry VII, and two worn by Henry VIII themselves. They were not very costly, though. Another remarkable suit of armour here belonged to John of Gaunt, a renowned warrior of a few hundred years ago, who had been more than a head taller than any person of our time. Today these same suits of armour can be seen, but what does this have to do with Elizabeth I? When walking around, what is clear is that there are not many pieces of armour or artefacts linked to queens or women, but you would expect a number of ceremonial items perhaps, but there are not. But it was decided in the 1700s to commemorate Elizabeth I with her own display on the line of kings. She was to sit on top of a horse and was to have a wooden effigy created, showing her sitting proud and strong. Elizabeth was herself a warrior queen and she had seen off the Spanish Armada and had rallied troops and soldiers at Tilbury Docks in a remarkable speech in which she was linked to Athena, the goddess of war but queens had been excluded from the line of kings. For example, her half-sister Mary I never had, or probably never will, be commemorated on this. The only way she would have been would have been if somehow armour was found belonging to her, but at the time it was believed that queens did not have a place on the battlefield and they would leave their generals to take the fight to their enemies. But Queen Elizabeth I was to be put on the line of kings. A horse was sourced from the horse armoury, which was deemed suitable for her to sit on top of, and the tower officials must have wanted to choose a large and strong wooden horse in their possession for the display. But they needed to then have an effigy of Elizabeth I made too. This was to have a frame made from wood, and the most intricate and ornate part of the effigy was the face. This was carved and today can be seen at the tower, it shows Elizabeth I looking rather pensive, with her bright eyes open and her small mouth clasped shut. It has also had a ginger wig placed on top of it, showing short curls on the top of her head. Her face is pale, which shows the Queen in her famous white makeup, but also she has rosy red cheeks. The head is finished off with a small and modest ruff which is around her neck, and it shows the Queen looking rather alive. It's likely that the carpenters who made this effigy did this from paintings of her. With the head finished, the body of the Queen was then made also. 
The body of the Queen was made to make her look imposing and larger than life, but also it would have been fitted with clothes showing the riches of the Queen and also her power. Some of the finest sculptors of the time were involved in creating the effigy for Elizabeth I. However, what is shocking is that today only the head of Elizabeth I survives in this manner. But do we know for certain what the clothes were like that fitted to the body? Elizabeth sat proudly amongst the line of kings and was one of the very few women, if ever, who ever made it onto the display. For example, William III, who jewel ruled England with his wife Mary, made it onto the line of kings, but Mary did not. However, the only part of Elizabeth which is on display that survived is the head of the former queen. Her body which was on display has gone missing, and it's still not known what happened to this. During the Second World War, a number of direct hits landed near or within the walls of the tower. Many of the artefacts were moved to secret locations, including a number of the horses who were destroyed when they were stored beneath Whitehall, and a bomb hit them and encased them in rubble. It's not known whether the body of the effigy of Elizabeth was destroyed in this attack, or in an attack similar during the war, but it is possible that it was destroyed in this bombing. This means that strangely within the walls of the Tower of London, the place where Elizabeth I's mother lost her head, there is a head of Anne Boleyn's daughter that remains separated from its body. What is remarkable is that Elizabeth I made it onto the line of kings, showing that in the century after her death, her reputation preceded her, and that she was seen as an almost legendary figure in English history. Her refugee head is a remarkable item inside the collection of the royal armories, but it is missing its body. It would have been a brilliant tribute to the Tudor monarch, seeing her alongside her father, the man who looked down upon her because she was a daughter, sitting proudly on top of a horse in the remarkable display of the former armour of the monarchs. But she isn't the only one who is missing her body, as there are dozens of effigy heads of the kings who used to be on display, including that of her father. But the location of their bodies is also not known. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.